All the students fawn over as the powerful girl walks down the hallway. They call her the school goddess. The students are incredibly shocked when she goes into Anji's classroom to leave a letter and a black rose with him. Anji's curious classmates take the liberty to read the letter. She wants Anji to see her in the woods after school. Ay His classmates are teasing him, thinking that the school goddess left him a love letter. After school, they follow him to the woods, wanting to watch whatever might go down. Even the resident kitty is following him. Anji's annoyed with his classmates. Cause like, will they really follow him all the way? Fortunately for him, plant vines suddenly appear and tie them up. Anji and Dora are finally left alone. They seem to reach a dead end, but incredibly, the trees part for them and create a path. You know that time Moses parted the Red Sea? It's kind of like that, but a tree version. They spot the woman tending to the black rose planted in the middle of the woods. With the help of the carnivorous plant, the woman wants to take Dora from Anji. It seems like the round two Dora wants is finally happening. Anji stands up for Dora, saying she is his new family pet. She has a strange temper and eats a lot. But he's already attached to her, so no thanks. Without saying a word, the girl throws a black rose at him, which he dodges. His cheek gets scratched though. The plant spirit now joins the fight. The girl manipulates its vines to capture both of them. Anji can only dodge them as Dora is trying to find a way to help him out. She's trying to find her cleavers in the midst of food and other rubbish, while Anji here is fighting for his life. Aside from controlling the vines, the girl can also use the leaves to become as sharp as knives to target Aji. And as if that's not enough, she transforms a tree to become a monster she can utilize to catch Dora. She runs away, but the tree manages to tie her up. Oh no! As it is about to smash her, Aji rushes to her rescue and covers her with his body. The woman and the carnivorous plant think they already got the two, but suddenly, Anji and Dora cut a hole in the monster's hand, using Dora's cleavers to free themselves. As the woman manipulates the tree to attack again, Anji and Dora work together to produce power from Anji's fist to cut out the tree's hand. Then Dora releases crystal wings so they can effectively dodge the tree's attack. She then wraps up Anji's feet with crystal shields to help accelerate his moves, sliding up the tree as he cuts through its body with knives. The tree finally collapses with Anji's last blow, much to the woman's surprise. As Dora celebrates their win, Anji can't help but notice the woman's calm face when she uses her power to make the tree vanish and realizes the woman might not be what she seems to be. Dora, the ever war freak, tries to attack her with her cleaver behind her back. Anji immediately stops Dora's attack, much to her surprise. Anji explains that the woman has been holding back her power all this time. When Dora asks how he knew, he calls her an idiot and points out more monster trees behind Dora. They would have been dead by now if the woman had decided to. See that Anji had figured out the situation, the carnivorous plant reveals that this is all just a test, and he passes. But not Dora though. The spirit changes her tune as soon as she hears this. Since all that violence has been boring, she invites the two to Aji's place, to the plant spirits and Aji's shock. Well, he makes good ramen, she adds. The plant spirit launches a rant at that, asking them, who are they to decide when to fight and when to stop? Who do you think Missy here is? You think she's a glutton like you idiots? And right on cue, Missy's tummy rumbles, making her embarrassed. The other three are shocked to their core. Why are they so shocked? She's a woman too. Of course she's gonna get hungry. They're all in Anji's house, sharing the delicious meal he cooked for all of them. The spirits devour their meals. The girl likes the ramen too, but is more dignified about her reaction. Her spirit though is all but crying with how good the food is. He and Dora toast Anji's excellent cooking. Should have known that Anji's food would make them get along. The plant spirit apologizes for all the ruckus, saying they don't have a choice. When Anji asks why, the spirit tells him that there are both good and bad summoners, so it's common to fight out the first time you see each other. For spirits, there are both guardians and evil spirits. He then reveals that he and Missy are the city's guardians, and he's glad that they both passed the test. Now they can join him and Missy. Ah. 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 The girl sticks a drumstick into her spirit's mouth, 
preventing him from revealing more. She then steps out to take a breather. Aji follows suit, telling her that good food can save the world. I mean, he's not wrong. After a pause, the girl introduces herself as Hana. She proceeds to say that she knows Aji well, but not Dora. Giving him another black rose, she tells him she will continue to keep an eye on them. The two spirits also come out, with Dora asking if Hana confessed to him. At that, Hana and her spirit leave. As Aji watches them walk away, he tells Dora it's not a confession. After all, black roses mean, you're a devil, and you belong to me. In another land swathed with fire and chaos, a man walks away. A girl with cat ears and tail follows him, calling him her brother and telling him to come back. The man looks back, but he's instantly covered in darkness as he dissolves into a murder of crows and flies away. The girl can only watch in tears. The girl wakes up from her bad dream. She's now on a rooftop, surrounded by lots of cats. She smiles at one of them. They stare at the city below, and then two jumps down the building. That's Aji's cat friend, the white kitty. Well, now going back to our protagonist, Aji's school is in chaos when different animals suddenly appear. It turns out the whole city becomes a chaotic jungle as more wild beasts are roaming around. As Anji and Dora go out of the building to check on what's happening, he finds a woman standing close to the wild animals, and he instantly rushes to her, thinking that she needs saving, but Anji is wrong. The mysterious girl is the one who summoned those animals. Yep, it's the girl from the rooftop earlier. He also sees the kitty, who's apparently named Miawu, so he grabs it with a scruff to take it to safety. Miawu doesn't appreciate this though. It scratches Anji and runs back to the girl. To make matters more confusing, the girl calls Anji by his name and a dummy. How does she know his name? He can't even recognize her. As the girl pets the wild animal, Dora warns Anji to be careful as she senses the girl is not an ordinary person. They don't notice Hana and her spirit watching from atop a building to catch the animal summoner girl. The spirit remarks that their opponent is putting on a show, but he doesn't know what for. As they go down, the plant spits explosives as their first attack. Then Hana summons gigantic vines underground, causing a tremor that shocks the animal summoner. The vines bind each animal while the animal summoner manages to avoid it. But seeing the animals growl in pain, the summoner begs Hana to let them go, but refuses to surrender when they ask her to. It turns out the animal summoner is taking revenge on humans for stealing the land that is supposed to be for the animals. And since the animal summoner refuses to hand over her spirit, Hana decides to take her down and fight her head on. As they fight, the animal summoner transforms her hands into claws that almost scratch Hana's face. Hana is taken aback to discover how agile the summoner's movements are, that she can barely dodge them. The thrill of their fight makes Dora eager to join, but Anji wants to observe them first. The animal summoner continues to attack Hana unceasingly, until she manages to scrape Hana's face a little. After a few attempts, Hana manages to catch the summoner with her vine whip and throws her across the building. But the animal summoner remains unscratched as she speeds up to attack and transforms into a spirit bear. Meanwhile, Dora's now munching on popcorn while watching. Now back to the fight, realizing the animal summoner is already giving her all, Hana also stops holding back and releases the monster tree. It seems like a fight between an immovable object and an unstoppable force. That is, until the tree grows another pair of arms with the plant spirit's help. It then punches the bear multiple times until it's crushed. Meanwhile, Anji and Dora now have a table, chairs, and mics. Apparently, they're commentating. The spirit bear's pieces transform into several wolves. They get a chance to attack, but the monster tree gains spikes, grinding them. From wolves, the spirit transforms into a gigantic snake and attempts to coil up the tree. The monster tree struggles but still manages to remove the snake from its trunk. Just as Anji and Dora think it's already over, Anji notices Miao behind them. It's now exhausted and sporting a lot of injuries. Oh? He then notices Hana is also exhausted and injured. If the two still keep on fighting, they both might die. However, they don't seem to care about that as they still square up to fight. Not good. This time, Anji decides to interfere and asks Dora to get a non-lethal weapon. They jump in between, as they release the soul shackles to stop the tree and the snake. 
he asks them if they can just sit down and talk instead of fighting. The snake changes back to the animal summoner girl, but Aji has already figured out that she is the spirit, and Miyawu is the real summoner, which surprises everyone. As Aji tends to the cat's wounds, Miyawu remembers the time when Aji found her. She was injured and couldn't summon anything because of that. Aji helped her out and tended to her wounds, just like he's doing now. Dora surmises the situation at hand. Aji subdued the summoner, so the danger is past. They're done here. Hana and her planned spirit disagree with that, however. They need to hand Miyawu over first. Aji's life has seen lasting changes because of that bowl of ramen and the hungry spirit it summoned. His apathetic and self-contained routine is long gone. It's still up to anyone's guess if the change is for the better. But one thing's for sure though, Anji's in one hell of a ride. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.